Hey everyone, this is Tony Grun from Dubspot, and I'm here today with Chris Buono, who is the uh, guitar player for Kirsch Calais, and also a, an instructor here at Dubspot. And today we're going to be talking to you a little bit about Amplitube for iPad. Now, Amplitube is a software program that's basically like having a whole guitar amp stomp set up in your computer, but what they've done recently is, is made it portable into your iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch, and the way you get it into and out of your iPad is with the iRig. It's a cool little device, it's 39 bucks, fits in your pocket, goes everywhere you go. So what we're going to do is give you guys a little tutorial on how to make some setups and so you know where to go from. Some of the cool utilities that come with uh, Amplitube for iPhone is right here in the tools menu, you'll notice you have a tuner, a metronome, and you can also check out some of the demo sounds that came with the app. Over here at the tuner, we have it on, and I'm also gonna mute it here, so when I play into it, you won't hear anything come through the, come through the monitor, as opposed to this. So go down here, if you need the metronome, it's just a matter of hitting on. You can also tap it. You just wanna tap in the feel, or you can always slide right across to get different tempos. So to start creating your own presets, what we have set up here for you is a clean slate. Now normally when you turn on Amplitude for iPhone, you're going to see a couple effects and an amp. What we did here is we cleaned it up so you can see this from scratch. You're always going to have an amp at the bottom. And you'll be able to choose different amps by going to the amp menu down here. But we're going to work with this amp right here, so we're not going to make any uh, switches. So we have a nice clean Fender esque tone, and that's what the model is modeled after. You're going to see all the normal settings that you would normally see on the face of your own amp. So you're going to have your volume, which of course is going to control the level. You want to keep an eye on that to make sure that you prevent any clipping, especially if you're using headphones. If we want to tailor the tone, we can go over here to the EQ section, and of course you're going to have your normal bass, mid, and treble controls. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shift things the way I like them. I'm going to make sure I have the bass at five. And this is what I would do if I walked up to any real world amp. And that's one of the coolest points about the, uh, the application is the fact that it's so closely related to what it is that we're used to looking at. So we can really, you know, just utilize all the knowledge we have on the real world stuff and just apply it here. But just the difference is we're just using one finger. So we come over here. Adjust that presence knob just to get a little bit more highs happening. The knob adjusting is a matter of touching the knob, going up if you want to increase and coming down if you want to decrease. And I want to decrease that presence. So let's see what we got. So that's something for me to work with. I want to keep an eye on my reverb. This is a spring reverb emulation, so I'm always a big fan of less is more when it comes to that. Nice and subtle. Now if you notice over here to the right, some of the amps are going to have some of their signature effects. This one, in this case, we have tremolo. So it's a matter of taking the knobs, raising the knobs. Let's get that depth full so we get that helicopter effect. Sounds great. So what we have here so far is just a clean amp. If I want to change the mic, yeah, let's back off on that tremolo. If I want to change the mic, it's a matter of just tapping the icon and going in between the dynamic and the condenser. Right now I'm on the dynamic. And one easy way for me to do the cabinet switching is I can come over here and tap on the icon and go through the five different cabinet choices. You have a 112, a 212, two 412s, and a 15. Your effects are going to be up here. We have the choice of four effects. Let's drop down the menu here. You're going to see the choice you have. It's 10 effects, including a noise filter. We could skip and use a noise filter here for the clean app, but we definitely want to add something a little bit more spatial. So let's go over here to phaser with a Z. Hit the stomp switch, as you always need to do to turn on the effect. And you're off and running. Each uh, effect will have its own amount of knobs, um, so you can tweak whatever settings it offers you. In this case, this one has given us uh, speed options. And as I said, touch the knob. Up for increased, down for decrease. Now you'll line up your effects going from left to right, and that'll be the order of your signal chain, and then everything will be chained into the front end of your amp, just like as if you had your real world amp and a pedal setup. So next to the phaser, yeah, let's double up on our our spatial effect is going to go with a more true or time-based effect. And I'm going to turn on flanger, back off on the feedback, which is actually a delay setting. Keep the rate nice and slow. Let's pump up that depth. And so we can hear it more. Let's back off on the... So 
So what we're doing here is compounding time-based effects and wetting the signal up. And to complete the trio of time-based effects, let's go for chorus. Let's turn it on. I love cranking the depth on a chorus, keep the level real high. But let's lower that rate so we don't get that changy thing. There we go. Nice. And can't have a time-based array of effects without the ultimate time-based effect from which all these effects are made from. Oh, except for phasing. But let's turn the delay on. Make sure your level is at a place where you're going to like it. Make sure you put your delay up to a point where you're going to feel the the repeats. So if you start off with the effect here, you might get thrown off. If you look down here at the setting, that's 95 milliseconds. That's pretty fast. So you're not going to hear the actual repeats. Let's go up to here, up to here, say 500 range. Here we got 560 milliseconds back off on the feedback. And there you go. So we've created a clean amp situation, shows our cabinet, microphone, and then an array of four effects that go front end in. If you want to save that preset, remember, it's just a matter of going to the preset menu, and you're going to either choose a preset from scratch and hold it down till it turns yellow, or you'll go through a two-step two -step process that we'll go over uh, when we create a dirtier tone where you'll be able to save it that way. But for now, let's just hold down number eight, and there you have it, and you're good to go. Mm -hmm.